A calmer, simpler and more meaningful everyday life is often out of our reach only because we have too much stuff. And even possessing full closets, we still want more of what other people have and we don't, or what we are told we need to get. We turn our time into money and money into things, and then we dump most of our things or never use them or hate them for taking away our true selves. There is no magic solution to our deeper problems, of course, but minimalism can become a great starting point for figuring out who we really are and what we really need. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you 8 simple tips how to introduce minimalism into your life or freshen up your minimalist lifestyle. And I will also tell you three bonus tips how to stay true to your unique self without turning into a cookie cutter minimalist. Question the activities that you do automatically, by inertia, only because you were told to do so or you have forgotten why you're doing that in the first place. Doing nails, lashes, hair, going to an expensive gym without even using all the benefits that it offers or no longer enjoying a subscription box service. Inertia is a very tricky thing that is luring us into stagnation and numbness. Questioning your own decisions and patterns does not only help you save money, but also understand your personal dependencies and challenging aspects. Yeah, that's what decluttering does. It frees the space to see better where we are at the moment. Clear out your lists or boil them down to the best of the best. Dozens of things to do, to listen, to watch, to visit. The lists can grow so overwhelming. Yes, lists do help us clear our headspace by moving all our plans and intentions on paper or in any sort of apps, but we often save uncontrollably. I personally find it helpful to go through all the lists of my saved plans and future favorites and make a grand selection. I'm trying to stay realistic and to accept the fact that I don't have all the time and energy in the world. Decluttering our ambitions and plans, excessive ambitions and plans, can be so liberating. Rethink your values and their visual representation. For example, what success is for you visually, or beauty, or relationship? Is it branded bags, or gold jewelry, or frequent vacations, or matcha latte? See where you rely solely on physical manifestations and why. And maybe it's something that can be decluttered. Symbols can go, but true, deep meanings stay. Part with your just-in-case things. I know this may sound counterproductive in terms of frugality, but really, how many times did you use your actual just-in-case things? If more than thrice, then congratulations, you're a great planner and I admire you. I personally am not that type of person, and I find it very liberating to address my inherited scarcity mindset and transform it. If you haven't heard about scarcity mindset, I've made one or two videos about that, and I will link them in the description section. Have fun challenges on a regular basis. No spend day, cook with only what you have in your pantry day, six months without new clothes, a swap day, just anything. Reducing possessions, decluttering and saving can be so much fun. Gamification makes even the most dreaded experiences enjoyable. And kids know this so well. So, being adults, let's remind ourselves what it's like to be children again at least in this respect. Turn consumption into making. When you have an urge to buy, create something. Of course, it's very easy if you're a maker, but if you're not, it's still doable. Just get inspired and recreate outfits, for example, with what you already have in your closet. 
I personally enjoy doing that. It's so much fun and very satisfying. And also taking a photo of an item that you liked immensely in the shop and taking it back home can be a cool trick of owning a thing without buying it. Save and lay money aside, no matter how small is the sum $5, $20, $100 any money will work for you long term. Also, turning saving into a simple routine will make it less intimidating and the goals more achievable. The sums might seem nothing for you at first, but then after saving, say, $100 by laying aside $5 a week, you will see how much joy and confidence it brings. I personally prefer to save in cash because it's more tangible, but of course it can differ for everyone. Letting your challenging emotions out mindfully. Being always positive and sharing only good moments does not mean that your actual life is like that. We tend to share the ups with others, but we keep the downs to ourselves, and this can lead to very heavy mental clutter. I'm still apologetic in many situations. For example, in my recent video on Patreon, I shared some very challenging realizations and tough decisions, and I was so hesitant to do that because I didn't want to seem negative, but I'm glad I shared that and the response from my dear Patreons was so, so heartwarming. It's life after all, and if we don't process its dark sides, we can miss the bright ones. And now three bonus tips how to stay true to your unique self without turning into cookie cutter minimalists. Because, well, we all want to be special and we are special. And it's very important to keep that in mind while practicing minimalism in any of its forms. Focus on your own life, not on everyone else's. On so many occasions, social media makes us feel less, and then we tend to compensate that through shopping. It's a vicious circle. That's why don't be afraid to declutter people online or offline. Sometimes it's just needed. The dashboard of your personality lies here and here, not there. Don't overdo. Stay mindful of your own personal preferences and comfort things. For example, I love fresh cut flowers and I do allow myself to buy them from time to time or Brian buys me them. Is it a waste of money? Yeah, probably, but what a beautiful, fragrant and eye-pleasing waste of money. I have an old hard drive with tons of old movies and TV shows and books that I will never declutter. It was a gift from my father and although the hard disk is very outdated, it doesn't work that well, I'm still keeping it because it's so precious. It helps me spend time offline enjoying something that my father recommended me years ago. Don't go 100% digital. We are now on such a race with AI and mindless digitization that our sense of reality is challenged all the time. Our physical presence needs to be celebrated too through something that you personally enjoy and love doing through something that bears a special meaning to you. Is it a creative hobby, analog photographs, actual books, or a vast collection of spices? Leave your passions without any guilt and try to simplify and shrink your possessions where it can be done without compromising your unique self. For example, I don't much like keeping all my photos digital. I love photo books, especially old photo albums, 
and I regret not taking more of my old family photographs with me outside my home country. I also love creating my own clothes instead of thrifting. I'm shifting from digital collaging to analog collaging because this is me and this is you and we are so different. Let's celebrate that. Feel free to share in the comments which aspects of minimalism resonate with you the most, what you practice and what you are just planning to try out. And thank you so much for being here and watching and supporting, dear friends. A huge thank you to my Patreons and everyone who finds it possible to tip me on other tipping platforms. You make this channel possible. And for now, as always, be safe and keep your heart open. And I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока!